Hey guys, uh, it's Nick from Arch City Poker, and today's vlog going to be covering the topic of how to beat uh, live low stakes no limit games. I guess I could cover PLO games too, but we're just going to talk about no limit for uh, just because the majority of you guys that watch my videos or visit my site are no limit players. So uh, these, all the stuff I'm going to talk about applies to really any stakes of poker or any format of the game, but uh, specifically, like if I use any examples or what I'm talking about, it's kind of just going to apply to one, two, uh, one, three, and then like two, five no limit games, uh, you know, live games. So the reason that I'm covering this topic is I one of my buddies, um, he, the other day we were playing one, two, and he was waiting for the two, five game to open. He, he lost a couple pots and he said, you know, man, I just can't beat one, two games. I, I need the two, five game. And I hear this, this is echoed from many players uh, that I've played with that consider themselves like better than average, like better than the average, you know, live low stakes player. Uh, they say that they can't range anybody. They can't read anybody. They, these players that are bad are unpredictable and, uh, you know, they can't tailor some kind of strategy to beat that. I've also heard uh, a couple pros locally that they say things like the one, two game traps me. I, I, I can only play two, five or larger. And to be quite honest, uh, these guys are all pretty much dead wrong. Uh, you know, live low stakes games are are the easiest games to beat in the world. Uh, they're the easiest games to exploit. The player pool is uh, quite frankly horrendous if you want to talk about them uh, in an honest and, and generalized way. But you know, you'll have outliers. You'll have really good players. You have some pros that that grind low stakes games. Um, you know, you'll have maniacs. Then you'll have really nitty players. But for the most part, these players are going to be pretty loose and passive. And that brings me to my next point is that, you know, when I sit down at any stakes or like any kind of poker table and I think to myself, you know, what stakes am I at? What kind of players are these? Um, you know, what is the general playing style for the player pool? How do I basically exploit them to the maximum and utmost level? You know, if you guys go to sit at a 1-2 game, and I understand not being able to range some of these opponents. Uh, they are going to be a little unpredictable if they're play because I don't think that they think about what their lines or actions mean. Uh, I think a lot of times they just look at their cards and then decide what to do if, if their cards often match up with the flop or if they don't. So the biggest thing with these games, guys, is if you have a player pool that generally plays way too many hands, um, and they generally play way too passively. Like they aren't aggressive enough pre-flop. They aren't aggressive enough post-flop. They will overfold to aggression uh, post-flop, especially. Uh, they will probably overfold to three bets pre-flop, or if they call, then they're, they'll overfold the flop because they'll be playing pretty fit or fold. So th the easiest way to exploit these games and these players, guys, is to just come in with stronger and tighter ranges. Uh, come in with with ranges that dominate theirs. You're gonna hit. Uh, you know, board textures much, much more strongly than they will on average, which will allow you to represent hands to be able to, uh, you know, get maximum value out of your good hands. So you'll be able to, they're either going to call you down uh, pretty light most of the time. And if they have anything good, they're most likely just going to show aggressive resistance by raising and and they're not going to be bluffing at a high enough frequency to where you have to worry about properly defending against that especially if you're opening a lot of hands pre-flop and you're c-betting and you're barreling a lot post-flop these players aren't going to try to fight back at you with like you know high levels of aggression they're they're going to be calling a lot it it's almost kind of tilting to me to see a player sit down who starts opening like every pot he plays and then most of the players at the table if not all of them every single time just flat him with a wider range because they understand on like a very elementary level that this player is playing a lot of hands so he can't have it all the time so i'm just going to call with more hands because i feel like i can hit a flop and then like win money off of him somehow but that is like the worst way to go about it uh you should be three betting that kind of player with great frequency, like three betting him with lots of hands uh, to get him to either fold pre-flop or to get him heads up post-flop with his really wide and weak range. And then you can often, you know, go from there based on who has, you know, the range advantage, which you most likely will with your really strong three betting range. So 
that's just um, a pretty quick and easy example, I think, but it just makes the most sense. So basically, guys, just think about the players at your table, the players in general at a certain player pool, and just think about what's the best way that I profit off these players. How do I profit off of these players at my table right now? Play a solid and simple pre-flop strategy. You're going to feel like you're the tightest person at the table often, but that's going to be correct. That's going to be the best way to exploit these players. If you have a table that's um, going to play very tight pre-flop, then just start raising tons of hands. And if they're really tight pre-flop, they're going to be even tighter post-flop guys when the money starts getting larger, especially on that turn and river. So, I mean, you're, you're never going to probably make an unprofitable turn bet against those players often. So think about how the players at your table play and just think about how to exploit them to you know the most maximum level. They're not going to exploit you back. You don't have to worry about balance or anything like that. If you run into a player like that at those stakes, then yeah, you can start to think uh, a little bit more about balancing and, and not being so predictable and exploitable yourself. But like 99% of the time, you're not going to have to worry about that. Just get maximum value out of your good hands, bluff, when it's pretty obvious that you have a ton of fold equity or that the board really smashes your range and doesn't hit their weak ranges, whether they limp call or they just flat you in position or out of position with, with too weak of a range themselves. So um, I think that will pretty much wrap up this vlog, though. I know it was really simple and nothing like super uh, extraordinary, but I just it still amazes me to this day that when I see these players, all kinds of players that consider themselves uh, a little bit better than the average player pool, like I said, at, at like live low stakes games, uh, they just say they can't beat one, two. They don't understand it. They keep losing. Keep it simple. Play solid and or play a solid and simple strategy pre-flop and then post-flop. Just bet your good hands. Bet the shit out of them. Get max value out of these guys. They're not going to understand that you're not bluffing at a high enough frequency. They'll call you down. You'll print money off of them. And then if you need to bluff in certain spots, just think about if the range crushes your – or if the board texture – sorry, guys – crushes your range, if you can represent tons of value hands. Uh, if you know a turn card comes that is, quote, scary and you're in position and the you know the uh, your opponent checks to you, then bet it. Bet it like 100% of the time because they're not going to understand that – it's not going to hit you 100% of the time. All they're going to think is, well, there came that flush and or straight card, so my one pair can't be good now. I don't want to call river bet if I call now. So keep it simple. Think about how to exploit them. It's a real simple game, guys. So uh, if you have any questions about this or you want me to clarify on, on any of this stuff, then uh, feel free to let me know. This is Nick from Arch City Poker. Till next time.